Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Hukalo TV Human Colony Saturday webinar. Today is February 27th, 2016. We have a guest channeler today, Kim Louise. And um, I don't really have any announcements other than that. I hope everyone is well. Valerie, have you got uh, things to say over there? Well, just good morning, Dan. Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us. And in our room today, we have Bree, Christine, Holly, Krellick, Nirvana, or uh, Noha, Will, and myself, Valerie. Good morning, and today we have Kim Louise channeling. And let's see what she has to say this morning. Hi, Kim. Hi, everybody. Thank you for being here. Um, my third webinar in a row, wow, how blessed am I. 90% uh, sure Jim will be back next week, so we'll greet him back with open arms. So I hope he's having a settled time where he is right now in recovery. Um, I don't really have any announcements tonight. We, uh, It seems as if I have the sense that uh, one of my channels that I don't believe has come through a webinar before is going to uh, address the group tonight because he was requested and he's available, so, so that's pretty exciting. Um, and then I believe uh, there's someone else that wants to come in after that. So uh, there are messages. Um, of course, questions are welcome. Um, and I, I hope you all enjoy and I love you all. And uh, let's see how amazing we can make this, huh? So I will just take a moment and uh, just get a bit focused. Okay, and, and I'd just like to myself. add, can I add to that and say, would everyone just please keep their questions for the greater good and not so personal? And um, Kim will not be answering questions about the colony today. So other than that, let's have a good time. I'll see you all soon. Greetings. This is Pamak of the Honorable Yael. Good morning. So nice to meet you. Ah, yes. Hello, my friend. How are you? Oh, very well, thank you. And how are you today? Ah, very well, thank you. It was an honor to be invited to be amongst you this day. It is not often I am requested, not publicly at least. Oh, Hello. that's wonderful. Do you have um, any messages for us today? Oh, yes, my friends. We're on a ship. There are several of us. We are off the smaller ships around your planet. And what we do is we look upon the grid. Now, we also take great care in the various sectors where there is what you call trauma and damage occurring to Gaia. And yes, we are very aware that this is eternally sad in many cases. However, I would like to share with you that this is for the great good, as you would say. The acts of God, as you call them, yes, they are necessary. As the planet evolves and ascends, then so does the population. You are all aware that this is happening and the Gaia has its requirements. But as she does so, she is also bringing to your attention that there are more of your fossil fuels that will be available. There are more of your crystalline deposits that shall be filed and your precious metals. Of course, your gold at this time in your history is most valuable. For what you are to face economically and what is coming your way, yes, may I recommend that you view gold as a treasured investment. 
So there are two sides as to what is occurring on your planet at the moment. Now in the depths of your waters, the oceans are unexplored. The humans are interesting for they love to look above. They love to reach out to what they feel is above them. Now, we do attempt to bring the message to those who are apt to explore the depths of your oceans. There is great knowledge in the depths of your oceans. There is technology that will assist you. There are great findings. New, honorable, and useful to the humans in all shapes and kinds. I would like you all to think more about your oceans. What is at the depths of your oceans? Not only is there magic, what you would call, they appear magic until you master them, until you understand them, and you embrace the technologies and you integrate them into your world. And at that time, alignment will come with the populace and the shifts of both than they are at this moment in time. And your populace will not choose to build or inhabit portions of the planet that are due to shift and move. There will be more alignment, there will be less trauma. However, for this moment, though we are aware of this and the way that it affects the light grid on the planet, you are not ready just yet to become aware of this technology, the treasures, as you would say, on your maps of the pirates, even they were aware. It is centuries old, the myths of what accepts and lives and embraces your waters. So please consider that below you there is much within the layers of your earth. There are mysteries to be unfolded. So please honour your earth, honour your Gaia, understand that there are species very closely, where we do attempt to minimize the damage that comes to the planet Earth into moments of shifting when they need to be vast. Now, yes, things are accelerating. This is obvious. It is spread amongst your news and it is instilling fear. This is unfortunate. But please understand. There are beings around your planet who are minimizing what you would call the fallout as much as possible. We are supporting you and we are grateful that you honor us for that in which we work towards. Now I am an elder. I am of my choice. I may be on planets but I choose to remain around Earth. Earth is a very special, unique planet, and its populace is precious. Please understand that each of you is of greatness. You are connected to so much, and yet you do not see. This will come to pass. For now it is ample for me just to give you the message that safety will come, that risk will minimize, that your needs will be fulfilled as you adapt and you become more adjusted to using the natural energies which exist around you and not necessarily having to harvest your needs from the planet. So please understand that the disasters occurring at this time, they are necessary for in the future what you will require. Things will but things will settle. In the meantime, please love each other. Send each other the greatness of love you are able as human beings. For it lights up your grid. It lights up your planet. And it is these grids that are viewed upon by many aliens. Your galactic now. When the decision is made, this has influence upon your desire for first contact. 
This is the view that we share with them. For there need be more than 50% of your populace who is willing to receive a visitation, a contact, a first contact even, as you would say. There has been first contact several times. However, for this populace, it is another first, it is another new, it is another shift, it is another existence. So I just wanted to pop by and thank you for the invitation. Are there any questions or would you like me to leave? There is another waiting. Hello, Peric. How, How are you doing? Ah, very well, thank you, my friend. How are you? I am doing well. I'm wondering if you could give us an update on the uh, the new crystal grid because a new crystal grid was um, installed some some time ago last year, uh, uh, from what I understand. And I'm wondering, um, yeah, is all that going smoothly? Because some people are still sending an awful lot of energy to the grid, but I don't know if they're sending to the new one or the old one. It matters not. Okay, it shall fall good. where it is needed, yes. Please understand, your planet in its layers and what lays below, what you are yet to become aware of. It does not matter where you send your intention, your healing, the way in which you embrace Gaia. All your messages, they will be received in the way you intend. Now the grid, the crystalline grid that you understand to be in existence, yes, it is there, it is powerful, however it is only just beyond the surface. There is much more below that has influence upon what happens with this particular crystalline grid. So I would say to you, please, continue to concentrate your efforts in these areas, new or old, ancient, or in your future, it matters not. It is all important for Gaia. Gaia produces your crystalline grids. You create your own. There are many. They become more and more. So please, do not be too troubled about where you send your energies. It is all appropriate. All right, Perry. Thank you for that clarification. I know that uh, be really come in handy for a lot of people. Hmm. Very well. Hi, Perrick. I have a question, if you don't mind. Yes. Yes, I would just like to know um, what do you think would be the best way for us to try to clean up our ocean? Ah. Now this, my friend, is actually happening. Please be mindful that what you see on the surface, and though your divers feel they have dived far, the cleansing is actually happening. It is already consistently moving to purify your waters. It happens in the deep, dark depths, as you would call them. As humans, of course, you may look at your idea of pollution. You may look at the outgrowth and overgrowth. Sometimes there are mysteries, such as when your mammals ground themselves from the seas and they pass. And this is a mystery to many. There are theories. But please, may I share with you, none of these theories are entirely accurate. There is much going on beyond the depths that you are aware of. So the cleansing is actually in process. Between the idea of the beings who exist at that level and also the ones that live within the earth, the cleansing is continuous. It is happening continually. As you pollute, yes, it is cleansed. Sometimes you pollute far more than the cleansing is capable of. This is where they lay a danger. And I assume this is what you refer to. So I would say to you, my friend, use the sciences that you have now to deal with your oil spills, with your daily pollutants, those that are killing off the wildlife, 
but understand the mysteries of those that beach themselves. Communications are coming from deep beneath your oceans, far from the cores of your earth. There is many vibrational existences, all coexisting the best that they may. So your answer, my friend, yes, so it is a great one. You may definitely treat the surface of your oceans in cleansing technologies, and there are recent ones that have been discovered and yet to be put into use, and you will see this in the next years. Your technology to clean your waters, it will become a greater interest to many of your scientists. There will be a deliverance made. It will come through these particular scientists. They may not necessarily be aware that it is a deliverance. This matters not. Much deliverance comes in the creative times. It simply happens. It simply flows. It is not identified. Now this way, your ocean cleansers will be communicated with. You will full find many other ways to cleanse the waters. Not only in your oceans, but in the separate places you call lakes and rivers and dams. All the kinds of fluids on your planet, they shall be cleansed, including the cleansing of the fluids that inhabit each of you. Oh, that's wonderful news, and thank you so much. Bree, would you like to go next? Sure. Um, well, hello there. So nice to speak with you, Peric. Thank you for coming through. Hello. Um, my question is in relation to having recently learned that the pyramids are able to cleanse the environment and able to um, help living organisms and help everything around and inside. And so um, I've learned that recently we've been uncovering a lot of pyramids that we didn't know about even under the waters um, and in parts of the world that we weren't aware. Is it true that pyramids are popping up spontaneously out of nowhere across the earth and is this all in relation? <laughs> yes, my friend, well done. <laughs> it is true. There are more to be uncovered and as they become uncovered you will find there is a pattern. It will be as you would call dot to dot information. You, so you shall create an understanding further of the pyramids and the power of the pyramids. You are correct. Pyramids are incredibly powerful. They are of a design that works with everything within the bounds of your planet, including yourselves. It would be as if you are umbrella yourself. You veil yourself with the idea of the triangle. It brings in with it an energy force from what you would know as source or the creator or your God. It is a directive. It is a pointer as you use your arrows. It is moved and changed and yet the, the shape stays the same. This is imperative for you to understand how things may appear to be changeable. The only change is that there is healing. So yes, my friend, thank you for noticing this. This is very important and we find this encouraging. Thank you. Okay, Bree, did she answer your question? Uh, yes, absolutely. This is very exciting to learn more about and especially knowing that there are people out there building pyramid houses and building their own pyramids and the more that I think as a, as a human collective that we learn about this stuff, the better we can make things. So thank you very much. Namaste. Mm. Namaste, my friend. Okay, Christine, are you ready? Um, I was wondering, 
greetings and blessings. I was wondering, um, there have been reported a lot of humans that have created things. Um, one of them was a movie star that created a way to cleanse the ocean, the oil, um, oil spill, the junk, the trash. Whatever become of that? Ah, my friends, it is a sad truth that currency plays a large part in the cleanliness of your planets and the waters. It is not necessarily seen that this is something that is of high priority. And this is one reason why I come to you now and ask you to consider your oceans and the depths beyond. It is important that currency seem to be expendable. It seems it needs to be seen as worthy worthy of the finance and the currency. However, it is unfortunate that the humans will often wait until you are in a state of emergency before there is reaction. So yes, there are many ideas that are what you would call on the back burner. But until there is currency, until there is what you call profits, it is not likely that any of this shall be seen before your oceans become polluted enough that it will affect your ability to fish in these oceans. It must directly affect the humans before they are prepared to invest this energy, as you would say. So this is what has happened with these ideas. It is about currency. What about um, crystal grid that some of us like to create for um, healing the ocean and the waters? Yes. Yes. It is wonderful. It is wonderful when you do this. It lights up the sectors. Please understand that. It is very much imperative that your populace that lives here, they interact in this way. Please continue. The more of you that do so, you are actually working in unison with ourselves. You are supporting us. You are helping us. You are showing us. Now in that way we may reciprocate information. So the crystalline grid, yes, they are very important. But there is more than that that is required. Do you understand? Yes, I do. Thank you. You're welcome. May I also elaborate? You have crystalline deposits in your earth. You are yet to be exposed to them. Now they also are grids. They are grids made by Gaia. So they are effective also. So when you use your crystalline grid techniques, please encompass the one that already exists in the building of your planet. It is there. Please activate it. Wonderful. Are you, are you finished then, Christine? Yes, I am. Thank you. And thank you for your question. Noha? Thank you, my friend. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Paris. This is Noha. Um, I have a simple question. When you're sending energy to the ocean, to Gaia, and everywhere, all the energy sheets over there, like sharks, will they become down, come down? My apologies, I am having trouble hearing your question. Noha, can you speak a little louder, please? This is the highest I have over here. Can you hear me, or Eric? No, does somebody else hear you better? Yeah, please ask for me. My highest. Okay, maybe this one. Here, here we go. Kim or Perrick, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. My question is, um, it's just a simple question. When you're sending cleansing energies to Gaia, to the nature, to the oceans, will the species, the aggressive ones, will they come down? Yeah, like they attack. Do they come they down, Chipia? Calm down. They calm down. 
It won't be a tax. My friends, ultimately, your planet will be completely calm. But for the moment, your ecosystems in your oceans, they must feed upon each other. This is the way that it works naturally on your planet. The ecosystems in place all over. They may only survive because they feast on each other. Now there will be a settling period, yes. But it is a ways off at the moment. You're saying it's, it's going to take... You're saying you're going to take its own time in order to become more harmonized, right? For the oceans, yes, and until you reach the depths of your oceans and you truly understand what is down there, it will be timely, yes. That's it. Thanks a lot. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Okay, Peric, can can we say thank you so much for coming and visiting us today? It was such a pleasure to meet you. And um, can we please bring back Kim now? Certainly. Much love, my friends. Please continue to support us with your crystals and your lights. Until we meet again, namaste. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Namaste. Oh, hello, Kim. Hello. Kim. hello. <coughs> oh, it was wonderful <coughs> to meet Peric. Do you need a drink or something? Yeah, I think I have one. <laughs> Let's get you a little refreshed and see if there's anybody else that would like to come visit today. Yes, there is. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh, Peric's voice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I'll bring in the next one. <laughs> okay. Let's see who's willing to come and visit today. Greetings. Hello. It's been Alma Talk. Hello, my friends. Well, hello, Alma Talk. It's good to see you again. Mm, yes, and you all as well. How are you? Oh, wonderful. Do you goes. have any messages for us today, Alma Talk? Ah, yes. I come with a message for you all. Every single one of you that walks this planet. I have a message of thanks. I would like to discuss with you ways in which you use your intangibles and I want to bring thanks to you for that. Now, I would like firstly to start with the idea of the empath. The empaths, they walk through your planet. They have much to teach because they are so sensitive. They have compassion. They have kindness, they are gentle, and often empaths will do their best to avoid being in what you would call a crowded situation. They find it draining. Now, empaths are also called sensitives, three-dimensional beings. This comes naturally to you. It is only the degree of which you feel these sensations that alters. Empaths are precious. Often they withdraw, for the energies around them are simply too much for them to take. They have not yet learned how to veil themselves from energies other than their own. 
and I will also point out here again about the vibration of the individual empath. The learning of the empath, it takes time. There needs to be a level of discomfort before the empath will look at what is going on within them. Now many empaths are naturally born and by the time they come into what you call your school systems, they do then have already built their veil because this becomes a natural process for them. So they grow into adults who are very able. They are the ones you will find in your career paths as what you call your psychologist, your psychiatrist, your doctors, your nurses, etc, etc. They are very valuable to this planet. Beyond that, I would like to address the telepath the telepaths who do the amazing and wonderful work of communicating between yourselves without words. You are using the essence, the greatness of essence that you are. The telepaths, it is reciprocal. You may have great learnings. You may have masterful telepathy where you may reach out beyond the stars at your will. This too is becoming far more common, though it is not as appreciated. Also, the empaths, they are not as appreciated either. Now, the reason for this, I shall go a step further. Let us speak to the mediums, as you call them. The mediums, typically, they are communicating with spirit via the humans. They are using the human conduits to contact you. Spirit and mediumship very much align. Now also, mediumship can also entail the idea of aliens, yes. This is traditionally, in your recent centuries, something that has become more common. Prior to that, oh, thank you so much. They were dead. The they were experiencing. May I continue? Hello. It was just a glitch in the audio. I'm um, talk. Go ahead. Very good. The medium. The appreciation for their abilities, very important as with the empaths, the telepaths, the mediums, the realms all around you that you allow to come via conduits to send you messages, to bring you love, the way in which you open your hearts to the wonder of things that are intangible within you. But my friends, understand you all have resonance just with your five senses. You have the ability to resonate. Resonate brings you directives. It helps you to build your belief systems and believe in who you are choose what the empaths, the mediums, the telepaths, the messages that they bring. Which of those do you resonate with? I simply wish to point out that you are of greatness as you are. And yes, you reach for ascension. This is wonderful. We come to support you in that. But please understand your DNA. DNA, it is a subject that is being spoken about on many, many planets at the moment. And the human DNA is very valuable. Please value yourselves because of that. Whether you are an empath, whether you are a telepath, whether you are a medium. Now, your five senses. Why are you so drawn to the idea of trans channeling? It is another form of communication, yes. 
trans channeling is attractive to the humans because it involves the senses. It involves resonance. It involves the senses, the five senses that you already have. It is interesting. You are drawn to it for it is visual. It is something that is tangible and yet it is not. So those of you who look to channelers, you admire and you reach to achieve. And bless you, my friends, for you want to participate and bring love to your populace and your earth. But I would like you to understand, individually, you are very important, just as you are. You receive messages that are appropriate from spirit. This is how it is built. This is how your Earth operates. The space-time continuum, you are traveling along this at a speedier rate at this time. It is marvelous. So there is much interest in your planet at the moment. So please, if you are sensing energies outside of things that are familiar to you, be sure, be sure. Within your own sense, your own resonance, be responsible within yourself that the messages that you receive are those that are to elevate the populace and yourself. So the message that I bring to you today is one of thanks. We honour you with a tribute from the Human Channeling Collective, all of you. All of you, every single one, even those who don't fall within the boundaries of what I have described and you may label them as sociopaths, psychopaths, narcissists, they all have their roles to play. So as you reach out, if you are to come across one in your understandings who has withdrawn, one who chooses to spend time alone, it appears as depression, it can manifest as such. For these beings, such as empaths, feel there is a fault of their own. They are dysfunctional. I want you to reach out. Reach out with your knowledge. Reassure these empaths that it is not them who is at fault. It is very important for like to meet like. Seek out those that you see withdrawing from your societies, that you see hidden behind objects in your streets without a home. Reach out to them. They have great messages to give. They have done much learning because they have become introspective, particularly the empaths. The telepaths, when they become introspective, very often their messages become clearer, they become louder. They are able to focus a tad more. Now, if you are to come across a telepath and you know how to recognize one, and you see them not understanding that this is an ability that they have, please encourage them. Encourage them, elevate them, lift them. They have a purpose. They are precious. You all are. So my thanks to you I bring from the collective, the human collective of the channelers. It is a vast and growing collective, full of information, full of love and grandeur, full of respect and humility. And they wish to thank you. They wish to bring you gratitude as you do them. They want to thank you for what you allow, what you bring, that your channelers are channeling. Thank you. Thank you, my friends. This is important. This is my message. Mm, thank you so thank much. You so what much. a wonderful message indeed. And now we have Wanda who would like to ask a question, if that's okay. Yes. Okay, Wanda? Yes, I'm here. This is Wanda. Um, I had a question. I had uh, several dreams, mostly when I'm in my 30s, um, about going to a room with many crystals and a, a lady with dark hair. 
And I don't know what messages she was trying to give me. You believe, she was. you believe that there was messages there, verbal messages there for you, yes? It feels like there was, or maybe just healing. I'm not sure. Yes, my friend. Typically, what would happen? Now, this is a visitation to the crystal room, my friend. Congratulations. Many, many times. times. I've been many times. Yes. So there's a lady always there with dark hair, with long dark hair. Yes. Yes, you are doing well of her. Yes. Yes. Someone she has I know. Friend, did you? Yeah, she I'm has. Sorry. I don't know who she is. Who is she? It is not necessary. However, I will tell you. Okay. It has to do with your spirit group. She is guiding you through the crystal rooms. Now, when you move through the crystal rooms, it is essential, particularly for humans, when they visit the order in which they enter the room. Now, if you can imagine, and I know that you can, but for others, can imagine a room that is simply full of crystals. It is lined yes. with crystals. Yeah. The crystals are designed in specific areas, in specific ways. There are doorways. There are entrances. Oh, now, this particular being is guiding you for the reason that you are being scanned, for want of a better word. You are being watched over very carefully. Now, they want to keep you functioning at a certain level of your ascension. Now, this is one use of the crystal room. Each time you visit, you may come with what you call a different issue. Now, you will be guided because identification of what the issue is is often something different to what the human thinks, what they understand. So as you move into the crystal room, each door is a beginning to a new part of healing. If you are in grief and you are taken to the crystal room, then you shall journey through a particular door designed just for you, your own uniqueness, and you shall enter the room and you shall be guided to the areas and Ask to spend time amongst particular crystals that will support you in the process that you are on. Now, I will remind you, it is lovely that you are having memory. Bless you, my friend. There are many who go that don't. It doesn't matter at this point in time if you don't remember. The point is, for those of you who make the request and you go there, you shall feel more at peace within yourself. Now, your journey, that you are particularly going to the crystal room. This is she very special that you may she remember. She did speak to me, but I don't remember what she said, but there were words spoken. Yes. They would be directives. Oh. Directives and communication of yeah. how to enter. Yes. What is yeah. it that you have come for? She will know. That's yeah. her job. Yeah. Right. Yes. She's very close to you. She's yeah. very close to you. She stays by you very closely always. It's just simply that she manifests as a being to you when you go to the crystal room. Can she's I ask, is she a, 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 a relative or is she someone that's just in charge of the crystal room? No, she's not in charge of the crystal room, no. She is not a relative in this lifetime either, no. But she has been a relative in the past. You have a very strong connection. Is it my grandmother? Do you my mean your grandmother who's passed yes. in this lifetime? No, my friend, no. No, okay. No, it is not one that you would know to have incarnated on the earth in this okay. time frame. Okay. Yes. It is one that you have cycled through from your spirit group. Yeah, she stays with me often. Yes. She is very close by. 
She's very connected with you. It's an exceptional relationship. You are able to speak to spirit very easily. And yes. This is why you have been able to come together in such an effective way. I would say to you, my friend, please master this. It's wonderful and share the mastery. Yes. yes. If you are able to document it in some way, shape or form that will be relatable to other humans, please go ahead and do so. Well, I had to crawl a mountain with crystals on the mountain yeah. to get to the crystal room. Yes. I will share this with you. Originally, there was one large crystal room and then there became a demand. And so what happened was there were six smaller sized ships that were purely formed of crystal. Wow. These ships, obviously, they are smaller, they are able to veil themselves. They may move closer to the earth. They are in closer vicinity for yourselves to have a visitation. Wow. Now, while the idea of teleportation, astral travel, etc., etc., is being discussed, the way in which you go is spiritually. So, in your sense, it is astral. Now, what you are doing because you are climbing the mountain? Yes. We just discussed with Perak the clusters of crystals that are found on your planet. They see, we see, you at this point in time do not. However, it is very effective to bring you to a ship that is on a mountain of crystals also. What you're standing up along the crystals is preparing you in readiness. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome, my friend. Please continue and please share your experiences. Okay. okay. Namaste. Namaste. Hmm. Thank you, Wanda. Thank you, Mama Talk. And now we have Karelic that has a question. Uh, yes, hello. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Thank you. Yes, hello, I'm a talk. I have a question about the meeting that took place last week between the governments of the Earth and the alien alliances. I wanted to know how that, how the meeting between the two parties went, if there was any progress done. The holographics are being addressed, yes. But they are not actually being addressed in a public forum. The decision has already been made. Now, you have a group that has formed because of these meetings and because there has been an agreement that holographic visitation will be allowed at this point in time until the group that has been nominated by your governments to work with the aliens on perfecting the holographic idea, there will not be much more addressed in the meetings at this time, not around the aliens. Now, there will be a request made. It is on the agenda. It did not happen at the recent meeting, but it will come up at the next one. The events of destruction that are happening around your planet, Gaia moving, shifting, reshaping, the humans I have the intention that they will bring to the next meeting to request again a request from the aliens to help minimize the damage. They understand that there is a species around your planet and it is their purpose to minimize this. I'm sorry, there was a noise distortion. Yeah, David, can you mute please until it's your turn? Yes. What will happen is they will request, as I said, that to the alien delegates, could they please support the Earth more than they already are? Now, what they will find is that the aliens are already working very hard. This particular species works very hard to minimize the fallout. 
that is going on around these tragedies. So this particular recent meeting was not one of great shift towards the alien idea of first contact that much of your populace wants. There is still the issue that they are complacent. The government representatives that come to these meetings, they are still complacent. But they have agreed that they will work on the holographics. Now, there is a meeting to come in the very near future of your time. There will be the meeting of the Great Assembly. Now, I always attend the Great Assembly. I am one who instructs. I will have more information to share with you at a later date. This is typically when I will come to you with a very specific message and the messages are formed in the Great Assembly. What happens is Earth is actually only one planet that is discussed, that is nominated, understood as being three-dimensional. There are far more planets such as yours than you could imagine. And many of you are in similar stages of ascension. Now you are not all humans, no. But you are all beings that are looking to spiritually evolve at the same pace as you are on Earth. Now, once that happens, once the Great Assembly has been completed and all feedback has been shared, then I will generally come to you with a broader message for your planet. Does that answer your question? Uh, yes. And I have a second question is I've had I've been having dreams of black dogs. I was wondering if you could help me with the meaning behind those dreams. Crow, these are your friends. They're your friends. They are ones that you have asked for. You attract, you attract your pet animals. You attract them. Of course you will attract them in your dreams. They are something that you create for yourself. Now what do they bring you? If you were to describe, let me pose this interesting question. If you were to Describe to an alien unfamiliar with the canine species how these individual beings felt. How did they manifest to you? What did you experience? Get down to the detail. You're telling an alien that you had a dream about the dogs. Do this, you shall get your answer. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, are you finished then, Crow? Well, I do have one more question. I just want to know if there's any information I should know about at this time. Yes. It is very important that you do work out for yourself, that you come to your own conclusion at this point in time for your personal evolution to understand why you were dreaming about these dogs. This is one reason why in the dream state you will find many channels will not explain, will not go into too great a detail because otherwise the message is lost. Where humans learn and they learn using their own senses, they remember. If information is given, they may forget. Get. It's too easy. You must put some effort into your own evolution. You must take some responsibility into your own ascension. So this is why I only give you this way to address the idea of the dogs in your dreams. Because it is very important that you are the one who comes to understand and translate them for yourself. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Crow. Great questions. Okay, David, are you ready? Uh, yes. Hello. Hello. 
I'm uh, wondering any kind of messages that may help me on my journey to, to be of service on what I'm here to do on my journey. Do you mean your purpose? Yes. This is a public <laughs> deliverance, my friend. Oh, we have to speak. Yeah, we might have we to might have, have David, David in between David questions, questions which is creating a uh, loop. Please tell me when to proceed. Yeah, go ahead, I'm going to talk. Sorry, go ahead. Yes. This being a public deliverance, my friend, I shall share this information for all who may see it. A journey for each of you on this planet. Now, they may be of any kind of assessment, but they are individual. You are guided. You are guided you to navigate. You are given messages consistently. Now, the messages that come to you will very often be from spirit. Often it is referred to as the universe. It does not matter. What is important is that you are picking up on these messages, the guidance. You will have initially subtle directives. If you are able to read subtly, then that will be all you need to guide you to find your purpose, to become aligned with your purpose. Now, please rest assured, should you stray off the path, then the universe, as such, shall give you indicators, more indicators that will come through more strongly. They will become something that will become consistent. Please, any humans, when they get to this stage, do not be complacent. This happens for all of you. This is the love of Source creating for you your reality and the reason you are here, showing you the way, guidance. Now, if you choose still to stay off track and you find yourself moving off path and you're consistently repeating the same errors, the same mistakes, you're not correcting, what happens is you end up with a very intense energy field of some kind of manifestation on your planet that will hit you. It will be so great and vast that you will not miss it. You cannot miss it. This is, the, this is how much you are loved. This is how important you are. The universe puts this energy into caring for you, showing you the way. But you have to be able to see. If you do not see, the universe will simply get louder. It is important that you come to your own conclusion as to what your purpose is because timing, timing plays a big part for all of you in your growth, in your ascension. All growth coming at once, it only creates chaos. This is not something that serves humans. You need to have orderliness. Your messages will come in an orderly fashion. So you need to be open enough, you need to be aware enough to listen, look, be guided. My friend, that is the answer I will give to you in this public setting, for it applies to all of you. Did that answer your question, David? You have to unmute again in order to ask another question. Okay, there we go. It was taking a second. Uh, thank you. Yes, I was just uh, been, uh, working with Spirit and they 
given me a great understanding in that aspect of what I'm doing and I just wanted to know you know your perspective on how I can better understand how I'm gonna be able to do these things they they just sound so um, amazing that it just seems a bit big right now for me to grasp the uh, me doing these things yes what an honor you obviously, you obviously uh, I know, I'm sorry David can you mute while she's talking thank you Go you are ahead obviously on your path. It is always, always far grander than any human can imagine what their true purpose is. There are many that are told that yes, their purpose may be this or yes, their purpose may be that and they simply cannot do what you call get your head around it. Because each of you are that great. Each of you are able to make a huge difference to the events that happen on this planet, to the way in which you connect to each other. It is always, always far greater than you can imagine. So my friend, enjoy, enjoy. Take that ride, take that journey. Give yourself some time to absorb if you need to. But my friend, Journey stealthily. Move forward. If you know what your purpose is, then you know how to gain it. And enjoy the process, please. Does that answer your question? Okay, David. Okay. Are you finished? Yes, it just took a minute to get to the on the computers. Okay, well, thank you thank very, you very much, much, David. David. It's nice, it's to, nice meet to meet you today. today. Thank you. Namaste. 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 Okay, and next then we have Dan, who would like to ask a question. Hello, Alma Talk. Hello, Dan. How are you? I know you've kind of been talking a little bit about, you know, the spiritual practice. Can you talk a little bit about the benefits of being serious in your spiritual practice because I think some people get kind of uh, a little iffy sometimes or maybe they kind of drift around a little bit they're not quite sure if they could commit totally to a to a practice but uh, I, I'm often telling people about the importance of following their inner guidance can you maybe comment on that just a little bit mm, yes is this re with regard to ascension Dan yeah, with ascension or just with awakening, yeah, even their own personal awakening. Mm -hmm. And you believe there are those who are being flippant, correct? There are some that are sometimes a little lost, yeah. Yes. There are times when stillness is necessary. There are times when levity is necessary. Yes, what you say is true. There is seriousness that is needed for ascension, but at the same time there is room for playfulness. Now if this is not taking away from what your purpose is, and you may be playful, then please go ahead and do so. Playfulness is very important, but value your ascension. Value when you work on your ascension. Care about yourself enough to take that seriously. It is something that is important. And yes, there are times where you absolutely need to be what you call serious. Your vibrations must be at a steady pace and ready to interact and attain knowledge. Now, when there needs to be a release from that, then yes, playfulness is very apt. It is important. It helps you in so many ways with remembrance, with journeying back to the child within you and helping you, showing you the wonder that you are. Playfulness, it is a wonderful practice. But yes, Dan, as you say, when it comes to your own personal individual ascension, 
there is a time for seriousness. Again, timing. Timing is very important for each of you to attain certain degrees of knowledge because it is all with a lessonary behind it. There may be times when you will see one accelerate very quickly in what you call ascension and this is because it is their time. So please understand that everybody evolves and moves and shifts at their own unique rate. And yes, allow the playfulness, please. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you, Alma Talk. It wasn't so much um, for me exactly as for everybody else. Of course. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Now, Malik has a cold, so she asked me if I could read this. Okay, she says, or he, my girlfriend, right knee has been hurting for four to five months, and we want to know if it is connected to any spirits present in our home. My knee hurt at the exact same place when I woke up an hour ago. Mm. May I have the name again, please? Malik. There is an energy around them, yes. It is an animal, a canine looking animal. This is why it's affecting the knees. It is actually quite affectionate. It's not something that means to cause fear. And it certainly does not mean to cause pain. But this is where their energy is being felt. And because it's a mystery, then very often humans will internalize this experience as pain. If you can understand that in this situation it is one of a pet and a being that was a pet and that one that has the habit of rubbing up against the leg of the human. Now the height being at the knee will indicate likely that it is one of your canines. Now it means you no harm. You may request that it move away from you, that it not come within your auric field. You most definitely may do that. If it becomes troublesome continually, then please you may sage the areas of your house, you may do a cleansing and I would also suggest that you build your cells through intuition using this energy's involvement and the effect that it's having on you to protect yourselves. This will also give the harmless, it's, it is a harmless energy, the message to just move back outside of your auric fields a bit further it's coming too close. Now, if you choose to embrace the experience, you can modify that pain into something that is pleasant. Understand, pain is the receptor that happens in the brain. It is not actually the idea that you are physically feeling the pain here. The message is coming from your subconscious. So you may retrain it and you may turn it into a perhaps spiritual pet, perhaps give it a name and train it as you would a canine. This could be a rather interesting interaction. It could also be part of your journey. But it is your decision based on your free will on how you deal with it. But yes, it is a spirit entity. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Sarah. Hello, I'm going to talk. Sarah. Hello. Hello. Um, How are you? Well, at the moment, a little bit emotionally in my head. Yes. Um. I was just wondering if you had any message for me. 
Yes, my friend, shed your tears and be done with them. You have no need. You are a stunning, amazing being. You have a very important purpose. Trust. You know about this, Sarah. You know about trust. You know about faith. You know about love. The way in which you express all of that is incredibly unique. I wish for you to understand that within yourself, that you deserve to be happy. You deserve for all that wonder that you put out for it to come back to you a hundredfold. There is no reason for you to despair, my friend. You are loved by many and there are many around you who may support you and they are willing. Draw back. You project so much. Allow yourself to receive. There is love. There is so much love, Sarah. I do not want to get too personal. Please understand that, not in this environment. But I want you to believe in yourself. Be clear. I spoke recently of the eye of the tiger. Take on the eye of the tiger. Is that helpful? Yes, I'm just. Am I moving forward? Just, I want Are you to move forward. I'm sorry. What was that last piece? I said I'm, I just want so bad to move forward. Of course, you are a being that may move forward very quickly. Often, far more quickly then the rest of your world can keep up. You know your journey. You have simply hit what you call a bump in the road. There is no need, there is no need for you to absorb harm. You know how to manage this. You have done it before. You set yourself free with nothing and you came back with so much more. Your journey, yes, Sarah, it's unique and it is grand. And in your greatness and with humility, you have identified your purpose. But please know. There are those around on this planet who will not have an appreciation for that at this point. But this is your journey. It is to educate them. So there may be ones around you who do not understand at this point, but they will come to understand because you will teach them. So your tears, my friend, wipe them. Be kind to yourself. There is no need, there is no need for you to feel any kind of negativity. So please, please let yourself shed those tears. Pick yourself up. You are wondrous. Sarah? Sarah, is there more? Sarah is saying thank you in text. She's um, upset. Yeah. Yes. Very good. Yes. Okay. Thank okay. you, Amitar, for being so sensitive. Appreciate that so much. And David would like to ask another question, if that's okay. Hello. Hello. I was um, thinking that on my journey, I know some of I will be 
healing and teaching and I'm just thinking about the aspect of being able to speak to large groups of people because sometimes I'm thinking that that right now might be a challenge if there's any personal any, any messages in, in general for me or specifically towards that what may help to do these kind of things to speak to large amounts of people easier yes my friend is fear driving you at the moment? I will assume the answer is yes. Um, not not totally. I did. I didn't catch that right away. I'm sorry. I didn't catch that right away because I have to keep muting. Um, it's no, not it's a little bit of fear. I just feel uncomfortable. I've noticed that when I'm in a group and it's my turn to talk, even when small groups, sometimes I feel a bit nervous. But sometimes there was a couple times that I wasn't at all, so it fluctuates a little. Yes. This is a natural process, my friend. It is simply the building of your self-esteem, the building of understanding and embracing yourself for the greatness that you are. Now, May I also say, you have mastered humility. Please do not feel that you must always project. Though your journey and your purpose may be a great one, it is only part of who you are. So you may put on, as many of your entertainers do, put on what you call a face when it is needed for you to project or perhaps there is curiosity and you wish to find out more and congratulations my friend you are doing so now you are speaking up this is all that's being asked of you at this point you will speak out after you speak up once you cross those boundaries and they are boundaries that are self-imposed please Remove them and do so gently. Take your steps slowly. Understand, once again, timing. You have the gift of time. Timing is very important. The time at which you feel you may project consistently with confidence, that you understand yourself enough, that you embrace yourself enough, that you may speak and it is apt and influential. When you have done that, the idea of you speaking via any means to many beings will become far more comfortable for you. But you need to believe in yourself. You believe in yourself first, the rest is secondary for you and what you are and who you are is very important. So move yourself slowly, project yourself slowly. It does not need to be with haste. Do you understand? Yes. Very good. Thank you, Alma Talk. Okay, we have John who is new to this and he would like to ask a question if he may. Of course. Hi, Hi John. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. All right, I was just wondering what do the spirits say about me? Which spirits, my friend? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm new to all this. <laughs> psychic stuff, I mean, and, you know, spirit talking and all that. I was just wondering if they're talking to you about me or where, if they are, what are they saying? Uh, well, I can tell you this, my friend. They are very happy that you have found your way here. Do you understand that how you found your way here was because you were guided by spirit? Okay. I guess. That simple. Yes, it is that simple, my friend. Be thankful. Please give thanks to your spirit realm. They've placed you on a track that is powerful and that can be as wondrous as you like. 
So please, thank them. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, John, for stepping up today. And it's a little hard when it's your first time, and we appreciate you too, Alma Talk, for being so gentle. Okay. Um, I don't have anybody right now on the list, but can I ask, Sheer, did you want to have a question? Okay, Will? William? Greetings, Alma Talk. <laughs> Greetings, Will. Val almost skipped me, so I had to type in me, 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 me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love you, Alma Talk. Thank you. Thank you so much for all the information you imparted this week. <laughs> <laughs> You're very welcome. Much love. Very enlightening. <laughs> very good. It is not often I feel the urge to laugh. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it is hard not to laugh around me. Yes. <laughs> Apparently this is true. <laughs> okay, so I do have a question. And it's it came up with Sarah, a discussion. Um... And it, it has to do with sure as well. So, um, because when we spoke last, I mentioned about walking in the Middle East and being yes. there. And yes. it resonated highly with Sarah. Yes. So, and since Sarah's having a uh, difficult emotional time right now, could you explain? Expand upon a um, the strong connection that she feels with me and Sheer. Hmm. Thank you. My friend, Will, I have been aware of the connection amongst the three of you for a time now. It was inevitable that this point would come. The connection that you have is part of your journeys. Once again, as I just shared with, I believe, David, the purpose for each of you is far greater than you can imagine for yourselves. Now, Sarah. Sarah has acted upon her purpose. She has demonstrated. She has shown many of your population, how to create, how to manifest, how to be the greatness that she is. Now you will also, you also understand yourself to the degree that you know where you wish to be because you are making your own choice, where you are best suited to heal. Sarah too heals. Sure, at this point in time, is coming to realize that he heals. Now, each of you do it in a different way. The fact that the three of you have identified this connection, you have made up a whole. There is one more. There is one more that would complete this scenario. It will come to you. You will know. But for now, the three of you, it is important that you stay in communication because there is something that needs to manifest here. It is very important. Sure is not the one who has to move in great, great strides. It is yourself and it is Sarah. But you do all understand that you are able to make a difference. And the three of you together are very powerful. 
not in the sense that you would go in and dominate a situation, but in the sense that you would demonstrate a form of leadership to create change in the sense of spirit. This is what is required in this part of your planet at this time. It's Straight. unity. Yes, it is unity, unification. Now, the three of you, you have cycled through many lifetimes together. This is one reason why you are feeling this is so strong. The three of you have experienced this before with the fourth. You have made vast changes in your history. It is very familiar to you. You are familiar to each other. So there is an opportunity here for you to gather the resources to move to the area that you may do the most good. Does that answer your question? Absolutely. Gratitude, Amatak. You're welcome. Okay, Sheer. Hello, Amatak. How are you? Sure. Well, thank you, my friend. How are you? I'm fine. Um, I have two questions. Um, one is kind of um, a big one, if you have time to answer it. It's about how the universe does something have to come first in order to bring something new. So if, it's, if you can say a couple of words about that, about that paradox, if it's possible, or if it's a whole other conversations. I missed the first part of your question, sure. Could you repeat it, please? Ah, how the universe was formed? Like, what was in the beginning? Ah. <laughs> yes, my friend. It was formed by thought. It was a single thought. Just as the power of your thoughts create now the law of attraction as you name it, the collective of source, it was in existence, a needless, wantless, peaceful experience. It was simply a form of being and in this way, this is how you are part of all, all of source. One thought, one thought created what I call the teardrop theory. The power of that thought created all of you, your own galaxy and the several other galaxies that exist. All life incarnate. This is why you are all joined together by source. There is a longing that many of you feel, a longing to go home. It is often substituted with the ideas of your organized religions and this is fine. They each have their purpose. But unity, unity is so important because you came from unity. You created thought. You wanted experience. The love of source, God, the Creator, whatever you wish to name, to name it, it is simply allowing, it is allowing for you to essentially go and play. But ultimately, in your ascension, as you become more connected, you will return to the idea of Source. But in the meantime, understand that this separation, though it was gentle and, in your perception, tiny, it was enough to create the vastness that is around you, the vibrations, the frequencies, 
and all the emotions that humans have that go along with that. So as you journey through your incarnations, as you reach the heights of your ascension, you reach the heights through the realms, the dimensions where you become simply a light being and you join once more with Source. It is all free will, it is all choice. Source loves you enough to allow you this. It is a playground. Does that answer your question? Yes. And my second question, uh, just to know if the Griffith near and the meeting with, with the government was uh, as, a, as a, the word just slipped my mind. If it was a good successful? one, it's hard for me to say successful. Successful, now. yes. Yes, just yes or no, because I know there are people who are waiting for the mic. Yes, no. If you want one word, my friend, no. Really? Why? Because there is a byproduct going on outside of those, that meeting at that time. <clears throat> Excuse the voice. The meeting, as I just explained, it did happen. The delegates were there, yes. There was not much interaction because there is a project that has been formed outside of the traditional government meetings to work on the holographic idea because it's seen now to be a issue between humans and alien. The humans are actually becoming interactive in creating this. They're not even sure why they are doing it, but they are. So there's a byproduct, a byproduct of a group that has come out of the meeting. They are concentrating, they are working on the holographic idea. Nothing came delivered back to yet to the meeting, but there are efforts being made, most definitely, to work on the holographic idea. So the meeting itself was not very active in the idea of addressing alien issues, but most definitely this group that is the byproduct is working well, and there is resolution on the way. So, well, some of the words were lost in the way because of the translation. So, in the bigger picture, was it good or not? In the big opinion, in the whole scheme of things, yes. It depends on your priorities. But if your priority, <coughs> excuse me, is first contact, as you call it, then yes. It is very successful. There is much effort being put in, just by a few, but it is enough to make a difference. They will report back to the human delegates when the meetings do reoccur. I believe there is a possibility that there might be some delays from future meetings at this point, but the holographic program is not stagnant stagnant. It is active. So in that regard, yes, it was successful. Okay. Uh, thank you. I will watch it later uh, to maybe understand it better. Thank mm. you very much for the time. You're welcome, Cher. Sure. Much love, my friend. Much love. Okay, Dan. Yeah. Hello, Alma Talk. I have a question from Barbara. Yes. Um, she has a couple of questions about hypnosis, or rather the uh, subliminal uh, programming that we use, uh, the binaural beats that we use on Earth, uh, the, uh, the third frequency uh, therapy kind of idea. Yes. And yes. she says that she, her desire is to raise her vibration and her frequency with this hypnosis, utilizing the positive affirmations. And she's wondering, Will she be able to raise her frequency faster with this hypnosis rather than to just say the affirmations without the hypnosis? And then the second part of that question is, will using the sounds of the binaural beads during the hypnosis enhance the effect even further? 
helped her. Yes. Hypnosis is a very powerful way to build upon a belief system. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes, it will amplify her experience. Now, there is no need for her to have subliminals. It's her choice, but it's not necessarily going to make a vast difference. It's much more effective if she simply wishes to use the hypnosis or the trance-like state because part of the evolution and part of understanding your frequency is that your conscious mind has a grasp on it. So subliminals may only be interfering. Things need to be clear, they need to be precise. If she's using hypnosis to increase her ascension, this is absolutely fine. I would encourage it. But subliminals, please avoid them. There is no need. Humans are far smarter than that. Does that answer a question? No, I believe it does. She's uh, not available to, uh, to comment. Mm. Can we explain to uh, another member what it means to raise our frequency, to raise our vibration? He's, uh, mm. it's, mm. This is a foreign concept and it's brand new. So uh, the importance yes. of raising one's uh, vibration via thinking. Yes, yes. It is part of evolution. Humans evolve. If you are to look back through your generations, you will notice that even with each generation, there is a height increase. Now, I am referring to your Western world, not necessarily the Eastern one. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, I may need to take a drink. <coughs> yeah, go ahead. One moment. My apologies. Yes. Lifting the vibration, yes. The yes. idea of ascension is simply being the best that you may be. Now it is reaching for a greater you. It is not unlike you visit your church and you educate yourselves from your great books, your Bibles. They all talk about being the greater good. The idea of kindness, the idea of being gentle, the idea of boundaries. You have your Ten Commandments. These ideas seem to be very acceptable on the planet at this point in time. Though there are many of the great books, yes, and many different belief systems that do not even involve great books. It's very important that your own belief system is individual. Now, ascension is a journey. It's a journey made by choice. It is not absolutely necessary that every human on the planet needs to be aware that they are ascending. Many humans will ascend without being aware that they are ascending. Now you, what you call wisdom, you see your elders, they have wisdom, particularly in your tribes. Your elders have attained knowledge. They are looked upon as gods. Gods are created in this way, so are your saints. It is about kindness. It is about being the wonder that the human being is and what they can create and manifest. Now, if we bring it down to a lower level, something that you may be active in on your daily basis, Think about the effect, the vast change that you may bring to this planet and yourself by simply doing some what you call random acts of kindness. These are becoming incredibly popular. 
and they are lifting the vibration at the same time. Now when you lift the vibration of a being such as a human, what you are doing is bringing about change for the greater good. You are re recorrecting, realigning yourselves with each other. So the connection between each other becomes a loving bond. There is no war. There is no starving. There is health. There is abundance. It is simply about living your life, particularly in an incarnation as a human, understanding that you are more than being just your perception of a human. Humans are incredibly special and if you have chosen to come in to a, a planet such as Earth, it is because there is lessonary here that is going to involve your five essential senses. Beyond that, those who tend to look at ascension, they tend to reach for the intangibles, as I referenced earlier, the empaths, the telepaths, the mediums, the channelers. These are all ideas of connecting through different means rather than you would perhaps the shake of a hand. And even in your interactions without this knowledge, one-on-one -on -one interactions can have a vast effect on each of you. If you are to come to a point in time where you feel that there is a negative around you, that you are unhappy, that you are not at peace, that you crave your home, whatever that may be. Many humans live within these boundaries and yet you do not need to. And this is why it is called the awakening. The awakening from that state where you believe that those simple three-dimensional issues, parts of who you are, are enough. For as long as that feels like enough, then yes, proceed. You will not come across a deliverance such as this unless you are ready to be awakened. Awakening is about building upon the spirit of the self. It is about you becoming the best that you may be. It is about becoming a giver and knowing when to receive so that you have a harmonic coexistence with those that you live upon this earth with. It is about peace, true inner peace and alignment. So ascension in that sense evolves you up the spiral, the spiral of knowledge, the spiral of greatness, also your definition of heaven. You may bring heaven to your earth. Does that answer the question? I believe so, well, Alma Talk. It was, uh, it's kind of a complex thing. I'm you know, trying to explain the vibrational nature of things to someone who's not considered the concept before. So uh, when, it'll be something that we elaborate on for a little while here. When it is further understood that each being and each mass that exists is made up of vibration and frequency. This is at the core of everything that happens on a three-dimensional planet. It is all of vibration. It is all of frequency. Now to lift this as you would dial your radios to something that is pleasant, to something that you prefer to hear. You are shifting your energy and elevating it. Music is a simple example I shall give you. The way in which the sound, the notes, the music is played will elevate you if it is something that you resonate with greatly. You are in an environment where you are able to express yourself around the music and just lift your mood. This is a change in frequency. This is a law. 
It is a galactic law. You do not have to seek it. This is your choice. But if it is something that interests you, and obviously you have come to this conversation, this deliverance, because you are curious. You are being guided. You are being guided by your spirit realm. Another very lengthy deliverance topic. But if you understand yourself as being far greater than just your physical mass that you feel you exist in, there is far more than that to explore, my friend. Far more. And yes, as Dad has said, it is a complex question. There is no simple answer and it is different for each individual because all your experiences are individual but you may all seek elevation of vibration because it alleviates you, it heals you, it brings forth the greatness that you are and also the willingness to learn what it is you are here to learn. Please understand, my friend, the only reason you are on this planet is because you have come in with an agreement that there is something for you to learn. The reason you need to learn it is because it is a clearing. You may term it as karma, a resolving of issues. You made the choice to do this lifetime the choice you now are faced with, how do you wish to do this lifetime? In your greatness or in ignorance? Is that more helpful? Yes, that was wonderful. Thank you, Alma Talk. We have one more question for, for the day um, from Simon, Simon Dorfman. So, so his question is, when he's recording an album or a song for the bands that he drums in, is there a way to use his Reiki during the recording process so it stays with the music constantly? So every time somebody listens to the music, can they feel the vibrations with the healing in it as well? And he says, much love. So he's wondering if he can infuse his energy into the, the music. And, and It's neat yes. because I already know he's saying his own answer. It's really, really yes. good. Yes, he most definitely can. Simon is actually very gifted in the idea of ascension. <clears throat> he has naturally evolved of his own doing. He is a spirit that has been incarnated many times. He understands the rhythm of music. He understands the rhythm of life. So he's able to combine the two. Yes. He may take his energetic Reiki and infuse it into anything that he chooses. If he wants to infuse it into what you call his drumming, most definitely. The power of the drum. Think about the history of the drum on your planet. Always there are drums. There is the beat of the drum. Even in your ancient tribes, there is the beat, the beat, the beat. Your heart beats. Drummers have an affinity with the heartbeat. They have an affinity with the idea of the bass, of the noise, the connection, the vibration that occurs when you use your drumstick. This is essentially is one reason why great drummers are so admired without even the knowledge why the human stands there and admires it because it is actually a manifestation of several different kinds of intangibles in one motion. So Simon, please go ahead, infuse your Reiki. Use it in your hands if you choose. You may impose, input your Reiki abilities into any piece of your drum. You may even do it with what you call your microphones, your amplifiers. But you may use it as vastly as you choose. If you wish and you are in a position to share the idea with your fellow musicians, 
please go ahead and do so. It will make the fight. But what you do in particular is going to be actually enhanced by far more than just Reiki. You have a natural talent. Does that answer the question? Yes, I believe so. Thank you so much, Alma Talk. We're, we're, we're approaching the top of the hour, which is normally our, our closing time, and I'm wondering if um, you have a blessing that you could offer from uh, your vast perspective. Uh, hold up a second here, Dan. I got one more question, if we can squeeze her in, if you don't mind, oh, Alma yes. Talk. I forgot That's about Wanda, fine. sorry. <laughs> okay, great. Wanda, would you like to ask your question? You must unmute first. Okay, there I got it. Um, yes, I had a, a, a very intense experience happen 15 years ago um, with uh, actually government people, but it sent me into a place of, of secrecy for one thing and also exposed me to the um, traveling of time and also of the universe that provides for us. Um, and I was wondering if you had any information for me about that. Uh, I feel like I opened Pandora's box, and maybe why did I even land there to get that information? Hmm. I'm sorry, my friend, I'm not hearing you very you have well. have to speak louder oh, for the birds, um, Wanda. No? The birds are wonderful, by the way. There is an event that happened 15 years ago that was involved with uh, government, but it was also uh, information about this information with aliens and also with uh, the universe and traveling in time. And it's information I have to keep to myself as a pledge. And I'm wondering uh, why would, at such a young age, I would land into their lap um, and open that Pandora's box. Hmm. Oh, I think we lost Kim Louise, Alma Talk. There she is. Alma Talk, back. are you still with us? It'll take a moment. I was wondering, yeah. Unmute, please, Kim. If you can see enough to unmute. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Thank yes, you. it is. Thank you. Can we still bring Alma talk in? Yes. Wanda, you'll have to mute while you're not talking, sweetheart. Oh. Yes, may I continue? Yes, please. Thank you. Yes. The Pandora's box, as referenced, it was timely. Because you were open to what was in the Pandora's box, now, there may have been another select time in your own personal evolution where you perhaps would have come across this knowledge and not perceived it in the way in which it was designed. This is why. This is why it happened at the age that it did. You were receptive and you remember it. That is key. The fact that you remember that information is key because there will come a time when you will need to share it. In the meantime, over these years, you have had time to define this experience for yourself. You have redefined it because you have put thought into it. You have made it your own creation. 
Now you may go back as if you do with one of your cameras and you may remember that experience as what you would call frame by frame. Certainly. But it's far more likely that deliverance in that time, in that period of your life and your journey since, is that you've been able to enhance on that experience and you have made it your own, which was very important. And yes, there will be a time for sharing. Wonderful. I hope that answered your question, Wanda. Okay. And now, do we have any blessings that you would like to give to us today on the talk? My friends, I would simply like to reinforce the thanks and gratitude to you all from the Human Channeling Collective, the way in which you receive it and the way in which you project it. Please know it is appreciated and your willingness to grow is very inspiring. You are an amazing species and many do bless you, many honour you and there is great love. So I would simply like to say to you once again, thank you. Thank you for being who you all are. Oh, thank you so much, Amatak. Namaste. Much love to you. Much love. And now can we bring back Kim, please? Certainly. Thank you. Hello, Kim. Hello. <laughs> Ooh. Well, thank Hi. you so much for bringing Alma Talk in. It was a wonderful um, session. You're welcome. <laughs> I imagine you're very thirsty right now. Yes, I am. <laughs> Time for the drink. Hello, everybody. <laughs> oh, we all had a chance to get our questions in, and we had wonderful answers, and we had a wonderful. Good wonderful prayer at the end so thank you so much and now uh, would anyone welcome. else like to say any prayers and blessings for us today how about Will Sarah yeah um, Will can go first though Will are you prepared Yes, just removing myself from the feedback loop, turning off my speakers and such. Thank you. So thank you all for joining today. It was an excellent webinar. I send out blessings to everyone. as we interact with each other, as we share our information energetically and verbally. Tap in and feel the source energy inside you. Feel how it flows through you. Feel how natural it feels through you. Allow yourself to be your awesome self, as awesome as you are, as awesome as you can be, you are divine just as you are. There is no need to change. Just be, just be awesome, just be you. And so it is. And so it is. Thank you for your awesomeness, Will and all that you give everyone that you meet. <clears throat> and now Sarah, would you like to do a blessing please? Yes. Pushalinikiasi. <laughs> 
anakia sa tianaya anikia si kushulunuku ayatsa naha ashakia sa ahania si kutushini ka hakani niki asa namaste Namaste, Sarah. And thank you all for joining us today. It's been an absolutely beautiful start to our weekend. And we wish for every one of you out there who are watching a beautiful day wherever you're at, whatever day you're watching this or night. And um, be sure to join us next weekend. Not sure who will be here. and It might just be Kim Louise again. And we love her. So we wouldn't mind that a bit. But hopefully, hopefully, we will have Jim back nice and healthy. Love to you all, and have a wonderful day. Much love. Yes, Jim will be back next weekend, uh, from what I understand. he He's doing much better. He's feeling a lot better. Uh, he's just not available today due to a previous uh, engagement. I'd like to remind everybody that um, Kim accepts donations. Uh, she has her PayPal information available on the events page, or she can be located at uh, multiverse.channeling at gmail.com and um, also at Multiverse Channeling on Facebook and several other places, and along with the Human Colony and everywhere else. Thank you, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, see you all next week. Bye-bye.